Hey everyone, Tankenstein here, and welcome to Stock Dispated. In this episode, I'll be showcasing the P-47N15. This is a currently ranked 3 battle rating 4.7 fighter in the American Air Force's tech tree, and is an optionally unlocked vehicle that sits in the same folder as the P-47D28, which makes this perfect for Stock Dispated. As with every Stock Dispated, I'll take this through at least 3 matches, with the first match being fully stocked, second match being about halfway spaded, and the third match being fully spaded, so that you can get an idea of whether or not you even want to unlock this at all, and if you want to fully grind through it and eventually make it spaded. Now you might be wondering to yourself, what's the difference between this and the previous D28? Well, there are a few differences, and I'll go over them really quickly now. So first, this does have clipped wings, which does help to increase range, top speed, and also, if I'm not mistaken, altitude. So this is a little bit of a higher altitude aircraft, which helps in boom to zoom. It also has wing-borne fuel tanks, where Whereas the D-28 does not have those, and this also has 600 rounds more in total for its M2 Browning machine guns. Additionally, the wings are slightly larger despite the fact that they are clipped on the edge, which does again help a bit with the altitude, but other than that, it's a very, very similar fighter compared to the D-28, but this is more boom and zoom oriented, a little bit more specialized for fighting, and arguably for intercepting compared to the D-28, which is more of just an overall overall aircraft that can be used for fighting, close air support, whatever you might need. But that being said, let's get into a few matches here, get this thing going, and uh, see if it's worth going from stock to spaded. Let's get into it. So here we are, fully stock with the P-47N15, and right away I can tell you this, it's a little bit sluggish. Uh, I think that's partially because of those fuel tanks in the wing. I mean, minimum fuel on this is like, I think 34 minutes, whereas a P-47D28 is I think 19 minutes it's substantially less than this which means that this weighs a good amount more at least in theory compared to the d28 um, now again you also do get a good amount more ammunition with this which is pretty nice but it is a bit sluggish fully stock which I guess is kind of expected now um, it does have the stock belts and the uh, tracer belts are going to be the ones I go for immediately with this thing because they essentially, not even essentially, they are literally um, just incendiary tracers, which is fantastic. Those things will set enemies on fire and then some. Uh, it's just such an amazing thing. Whereas the default is about 50% tracer or uh, incendiary. So not bad, uh, but not really perfect. So let's see if we can set this guy on fire. Probably not. I can almost guarantee you that if I had the incendiary tracers right now, I would have set that guy on fire. Probably the other guy as well. So we're going to go for this BE-6 real quick. Probably can set him on fire, hopefully. Got a kill. Not that guy. Not the guy who I initially wanted. Oop, hopefully I didn't just hit that guy. I would feel real bad if I did. But overall, performance on this, fully stock, not terrible, not great. Um, as you can see, I mean, it's... LMG or its HMGs are perfectly sufficient. Um, it's got okay turn time. Like I said, I did a test. I'm gonna get killed here. Um, I did a test with the with this uh, vehicle, the reference model versus the P47 D28, the 5.0 BR1 in the same folder, and this turns almost exactly as quick. About a, at around 450 meters, 450 uh, kilometers per hour. This takes a 180 degree turn about a quarter second slower. So at 8.5 seconds compared to 8.25 seconds with the D28. So it's negligible. Um, but again, I mean, there are some, this thing is in general a bit heavier. It's kind of slow slug uh, when it's fully stocked, but let's go ahead, get this thing about halfway spaded, see how it is. And you know what? At the very end, I'll do two matches fully spaded. One will be Fully spaded at RRB, the other will be fully spaded. Just a real quick CAS match. It'll be kind of like a match 3.1, and uh, we can see what we can do. But otherwise, armament very good. Durability is what you can expect from P47, so pretty decent. And it's got a, uh, I mean, it's good for boom and zoom, but you're probably not going to be able to get up to altitude fully stock. But let's get into the halfway spaded match and hopefully be able to climb a little bit better. So here we are about halfway spaded in the P-47N15. And I'll tell you guys this. I mean, once you get it uh, to about halfway spaded, I think thus far my performance is a touch over halfway upgraded. It is actually pretty decent. I mean, it's not going to be the fastest, 
vehicle in its BR insofar as climb rate is concerned. That's probably its biggest weak point, but it's not bad. Now, one point that I did not mention in the, uh, in the first part of this, the first match, was that you're probably going to want to fight uh, either heavy fighters or fighters or, or planes with more than one engine. So, typically, this is going to be seen as a uh, very heavy single-engine fighter. If I'm not mistaken, this is actually the largest single-engine fighter produced during the war. Maybe not this model specifically, but I wouldn't be too surprised if it was. Um, so, it doesn't have the greatest maneuverability. Even though it isn't bad, it's also not all that great. It is a bit better as a boom and zoomer. Not really a fantastic interceptor. As you can probably see here, I'm not really uh, able to get up to him all too well. But I was at least able to uh, shoot out his gunner, which is nice. Kind of surprised I did not get a uh, him set on fire. Because one of the engines, or one of the uh, upgrades, rather, that I got for this is the, uh, the whatchamacallit belts. The incendiary. So, that said, let's go ahead and... See what we can do for the rest of these guys, but again, thus far, performance is better, just not amazing. Okay, so somehow this B-25 is still alive. Uh, I'm going to claim my kill. He is struggling severely, pretty much on the brink of death here. But uh, this should get the kill very easily there. And if you guys say, oh, well, you stole the kill. I did get a crit before on him, so it wasn't really a steal kill. Or kill steal. Anyways, we have a DO-335. Both of these thus far have been... Twin engine uh, vehicles or multi engine vehicles, however you want to say it. Um, now, overall, the roll rate on this, I think it is a touch worse than, um, than like the D28, again, for example. Uh, this is a little bit faster than the D28, but not necessarily by a ton. It's really just because the aerodynamic profile of this is a little bit better. Unfortunately, what it comes down to as well is that the engine does overheat quite a bit with this. Let's see if I can set him on fire. I'm just randomly firing at a distance. But the engine does overheat a bit more than uh, than one might want. So, when you have the weapon, like, there are some engines, some planes around this BR. I think the FW-190 is one of them. Either that or it's definitely not one of them. It kind of slips my mind. But there are a few planes at and around this BR where you can just continue to use WEP without fear. This is not one of them, unfortunately. Uh, so we got that kill there. What I'm going to do is just dive down on this P-47 over there. As you can see, my engine is still on fire. Don't really want to go for that Spitfire because he can outturn me. That P-47, not so much. And as you can see, what I'm about to get is a huge boost of speed. This is a great boom and zoomer. Unfortunately, I was just hit real hard there. Um, I might go again for this Spitfire, actually, because he is a bit closer to me now. Got the kill. Very nice. Whatever people say about this, I don't care. This thing has plenty of armament. 50 cows are not a problem, in my opinion. Especially at and around this BR. Got a hit. And this thing also takes a good amount of damage. So let's just go ahead. I'm going to die here. I'm sure of it. Uh, I'm going to just try to get a final kill. Maybe a few extra hits here. Doesn't really matter so much if my engine is falling out. Because it's just going to happen. Oof, very nice. So, anyways, not too bad. Got three kills, four kills. Pretty damn quickly, no less. What I can tell you about this, halfway spaded, the biggest upgrade, again, is going to be the inclusion of those tracer belts that have 100% incendiary tracers. They are amazing. Again, if you don't get a kill, you'll likely set an engine on fire or a plane on fire and get an assist later. Um, and then further, I would say probably the engine injection. But thus far, again, still a very, very easy to grind through. Or an easy plane to grind through, rather. And it's just been a joy. Got a fifth kill. Look at that. Not too shabby. So I guess we have five kills now in my halfway spaded match. So that's it. Let's get into the fully spaded Air RB match. And then we can close it off with a real quick conclusion as a CAS plane. Because I know that you guys want to see this and use it as a uh, CAS plane, because, I mean, it is a P-47, after all. I said, let's get into it. So, here we are, finally, fully spaded with the P-47 N-15. And, um, I'll just say this right off the bat. I'm not going to not recommend this, but I don't really know if I can fully recommend it either. It's, it's a very good plane for what it is. 
You know, if you can get up to an altitude where you can just dive down on an enemy, kind of like what I'm doing here, then it's good. But one of the problems is that so many maps at and around this BR really don't have fantastic... Like, they, they don't have that build-up where you can just dive down like I'm doing. And thus, it does become a bit of a pain in the tuchus. Now, once you get down, I mean, again, especially with these ridiculous... And I do mean ridiculous ammo belts... This plane can be fantastic because you set everything on fire. Uh, I mean, it's just ridiculous how good this thing can be, especially against even bombers and, and large fighters. It's really, really good. Uh, let's see. Can I set this guy on fire? He's just going to go away. Didn't get... Okay, we have a crit against the cooling system. I'm just going to go away from this guy because I should be able to outspeed him. Including even that FW-190. Again, this is still a very quick aircraft. I'm going over 550 at hardly even a, uh, a descent here. And look at that. I'm actually gaining uh, distance between me and these guys. So, that's not too bad. I have at least one assist on the way. And uh, a little bit more to go. I've got a bunch of people on my tail, unfortunately. It looks like, actually, this BF-109 might catch up to me. So, what I'm going to do is turn to my left... Yeah, P-47 has five on his tail, no kidding. Got the aircraft killed, pull up, set him on fire, got the second kill. Ah, that kind of sucks, because I am now dead. But at least I got three kills in a very short amount of time. So again, do I recommend this aircraft? Yes and no. I like it enough. Okay, this guy's got to try to steal this kill. I'm not going to... You know what? If I'm going to still be alive here, I may as well fire on him, huh? Ah, so damn close. Anyways, so do I recommend this aircraft? For Air RB, it's still a really, really good aircraft. I mean, I'm not, like, out here having a, uh, a tough time of it getting kills. It's still a very good aircraft. And again, the fact is that you can get yourself additional rounds to use with this. Yeah, that's really, really good. In fact, actually, one can make an argument that this is even a better strafer than the D-28 because you get more rounds for your 50 cals. So I don't fully recommend it just because I really don't... It, it almost seems redundant in a way. But if you're a fan of history, especially considering that this model was specifically made for the Pacific Theater and was one of the last P-47s ever produced, yeah, I mean, it's a really cool aircraft. I think it's a very good fighter. Uh, we'll see how it is in CAS. I'm sure it's plenty good. But for Air RB, I mean... I don't not recommend it because it's bad. It's a really good aircraft, but again, you can get pretty much the same thing, just slightly better out of the D-28, and you're really not going to necessarily be facing many different planes compared to this. So that said, let's get into the final match, like CAS, just probably like a minute or two of CAS, and hopefully we can do well. Okay, so here we are with the CAS aspect of this, and uh, if you guys don't know, you can either have eight HFARs, one 500-pound bomb, which is very strange, or three 1,000-pound bombs, which, of course, you go with the three 1,000-pounders, because why not? And I still have the tracer belts, because if I'm not mistaken, they still have the same, like, they have the best armor pen that you can have. Plus, of course, they're tracers, so it makes it a little bit easier when aiming on the ground. Now, this is, again, probably it's going to be a really, really quick thing, because, uh... Uh, when I do CAS, I pretty much do it with the uh, express intent of uh, being like one and done. And besides, we already have enemies firing at me, which is obviously no bueno. So let's go turn here so I don't uh, rip my wing. But in all, yeah, I mean, this is a good aircraft. I think even the D-28 has more uh, CAS options. Like, you can do a little bit more with it than you can with this. Ooh, that's ugly. I just dropped two? Okay, I only dropped one, and I got that kill. That's always very fun. But we do have, it looks like, a uh, an actual C or a, um, an SPA over there, which is obviously not good. But as you can see, versus open-air vehicles, this thing is ridiculous when it comes to uh, strafing runs. That ASU, or whatever the heck it is, the 57, was pretty much just clown food or... I don't know, whatever the term is uh, that some people might use in this instance. 
Okay, let's go drop a bomb there. Oh, and I got the kill. That was a really ugly thing that I just did. But regardless, two kills, one assist. I guess that's something. So, I mean, unless you're as stupid as I am and you kind of make a close call like that, uh, you probably will have a little bit better success than I had. But still, two kills, one assist in uh, CAS. Not too bad, especially, you know, when I'm just kind of going in to uh, just get a few kills. So, that being said... Good aircraft, very good. Again, a little bit redundant. It's not the best P-47. It feels like a pretty good fighter, don't get me wrong, but uh, it doesn't really do anything necessarily better or worse than any other P-47. A little bit better at altitude, I feel, and when it's fully upgraded, it's quite a bit better getting up to altitude, but it's still not amazing. So either way, thanks so much for watching. Good aircraft, especially for history and P-47 fans, but not necessary unless, again, you're trying to just unlock every vehicle in the tech tree. By the way, thanks again. I'll see you all on the other side. Take care, everyone.